Do you know that Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson were not the original name Scottish writer Sir Arthur Conan Doyle intended to give his principal characters? In the next few minutes, we'll tell you some of the most exciting stories you need to know about Sherlock Holmes. In preliminary notes for the first Holmes story, Doyle originally considered the names Sharonford Holmes and Ormond Sacker. Eventually, Sharonford and Ormond Sacker made way for Sherlock and Dr. Watson, respectively. There the legend began. Arthur Conan Doyle introduced the fictional character Sherlock Holmes to the world when he published a study in Scarlet in 1887, establishing Holmes as the trailblazer of the modern mastermind detective. Sherlock Holmes tracks criminals in Victorian and Edwardian London, the south of England, and continental Europe, whereas Watson is Holmes' closest companion, helper, and roommate. Moreover, Watson narrates all but four of the Holmes stories in the first person. Unlike Holmes, who is described as eccentric, Watson is a classic Victorian gentleman. Despite not having the same deductive abilities as his friend, he is wise and intelligent. Despite Edgar Allan Poe's C. August Dupin and Emile Gabriel's Monsieur Lecoq being fictional detectives who predate Doyle's fictional work, Sherlock Holmes became more culturally profound and has been the most enduring character of the detective genre. Conan Doyle even advertised Holmes as the world's first and only consulting detective. However, evidence suggests he based the character on a real-life detective, and we'll throw more light on that later. Conan Doyle based Holmes' methods and demeanor on Dr. Joseph Bell, his professor at the University of Edinburgh Medical School. For example, Bell's method of diagnosing a patient greatly influenced the uncanny ability of Holmes to collect evidence based on his refined observation skills and deductive reasoning. According to Dr. Watson's narrations, Holmes is a very complex and moody character who is quite untidy despite his strict habits. Holmes appears to have manic and depressive episodes. He often smokes the pipe, plays the violin, and uses cocaine. Several characters reappear in the four novels and 56 short stories featuring Holmes. They include the awkward Scotland Yard Inspector Lestrade and the Baker Street Irregulars, a group of street Arabs who Holmes regularly employed as informers. Furthermore, his brother Midcroft, and most notably, his formidable opponent, Professor James Moriarty, are other mainstays. Though Sherlock Holmes suspected he was the world's first consulting detective, a real-life detective had a genuine claim to that title. Wendell Schur was a German-born private consulting detective who advertised his services in London around 1881. He investigated what later became the St. Luke's Mystery, a story about a baker's disappearance after returning to his home in East London's St. Luke's district. This story is relevant because the baker's name was Stanger, while Stangerson was the victim in the first home story. It makes you wonder if Wendell Schur's exploits inspired Conan Doyle's work. In the final problem, published in 1893, Conan Doyle famously attempted to kill off Holmes. During a violent struggle on Switzerland's Reichenbach Falls, Holmes and Professor Moriarty plunge over a precipice. Doyle claimed that he was motivated to kill off the character because it distracted him from better things. The public outpouring of grief over Holmes' death was enormous. Men wore black mourning bands, and more than 20,000 readers ended their subscriptions to the popular Strand magazine, to which Holmes contributed. Conan Doyle eventually resurrected his detective in the story The Adventure of the Empty House, published in 1903. Although The Adventure of Shoskin Old Place, published in 1927, is widely regarded as Conan Doyle's final Sherlock Holmes piece, an interesting discovery in 2015 led to the posthumous publishing of a new book we'll discuss later in the video. Subscribe to this channel for great insights into historical events and popular culture. Holmes remained a popular figure well into the 21st century. He features in popular stories such as The Adventure of the Blue Carbuncle, 1892, and The Adventure of the Speckled Band, 1892. Additionally, The Adventure of the Six Napoleons, 1904, and the novel The Hound of the Baskervilles, 1902, are two works featuring Holmes. Holmes' character has also been adapted for other media, and he is well known on both stage and screen. William Gillette, a founding member of the New York Holmes Society, 
still known as the Baker Street Irregulars, gave several popular theatrical portrayals of Holmes at the turn of the 20th century. Actors Basil Rathbone, Peter Cushing, Jeremy Brett, Robert Downey Jr., Benedict Cumberbatch, and Johnny Lee Miller have all played Sherlock Holmes on screen. In addition to numerous translations of the Holmes adventures around the world, a genre of parodies and pastiches based on the Sherlock Holmes character emerged. Ronald Knox's studies in the literature of Sherlock Holmes, published in 1912, sparked an entire collection of scholarly critiques of Conan Doyle's writings. Subsequent works in the Baker Street Journal, published by the Baker Street Irregulars, continue this trend. Holmes devotees, known as Sherlockians or Holmesians, frequently gather in societies to pay homage to the master detective. The oldest societies of the invitation, only Baker Street Irregulars, founded in 1934, and the Open Sherlock Holmes Society of London, founded in 1951. Conan Doyle's final Sherlock Holmes piece, The Adventure of Shoscombe Old Place, was published in 1927. However, in 2015, a historian named Walter Elliot discovered in Doyle's Attica story written by Doyle in 1904 titled Sherlock Holmes, Discovering the Borderbergs. The plot revolves around an exchange between Holmes and Watson, in which the detective uses his usual wit to figure out how Watson plans to spend his weekend. Though it might not sound as intriguing as some of the more notable works, it is a valuable treasure nonetheless. It was published in a short book called The Book of the Brig to Raise Funds for restoring a bridge in the Scottish town of Selkirk that had been washed away by flooding. If you have enjoyed this video, we recommend this video on how the lost city of Atlantis myth became a popular legend. Thanks for watching.